Well, everybody, we have a real, well, few days really that are pregnant with creativity and possibility. I'm mainly going to talk today about the Venus Kazemi that takes place early on Sunday the 13th. So I'm going to look at the chart for that, but this is quite a rare Kazemi. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the Venus cycle and what it's beginning and what this Venus retrograde has been about, because the Kazemi is the midpoint of the retrograde. But I do want to tell you that the, the core energy of this is about birthing really from the heart and really letting your radiance shine. But this is going to emerge as Venus emerges, and we'll talk about that as well. So I want to amuse you all <laughs> by showing you the shirt I bought specially for this Kazemi. And I hope this doesn't offend any senses, but um, <laughs> this is from a company called Spark Company, and it says I am effing radiant <laughs> and it's got flowers and venus is about the rose and all kinds of things like that venus is just well i have venus at the top of my chart but venus to my mind the venus cycle is as powerful if not more over longer term than the moon cycle that many of us follow and this venus retrograde has been off the charts uh, we've seen uh, the rise of the Barbie movie. We've seen the rise of Taylor Swift. We've seen uh, the rise of Beyonce. We actually also saw um, the passing of Sinead O'Connor right after the um, uh, station retrograde. But she was very intimately, her life path was very intimately connected with this Venus retrograde in Leo through her work. I'm not going to go into full details, but there's been a lot of divine feminine energy rising up. So even, even through her passing, Sinead O'Connor, people are now re-listening to her music, kind of have rediscovered her. I always loved her, but I've, you know, <laughs> life goes on. And I didn't even realize that she had created a memoir called Remembering. So I'm actually listening to that on my morning walks. And, and it's hilariously funny and, and touching if you um, want to do it. And she narrates it herself, which is even better. And she kind of giggles all the way through it as well. So it's almost like she's still with us in the room. And I kind of think she is. But anyway, to cut a long story short, this Kazemi I'm going to look at the chart in a second, is just a moment of new cycle. Venus starts a new 584-day cycle. <laughs> That's from retrograde, uh, Kazemi or star point, to the next one that's going to be in about 19 months time or 584 days exactly. And this is going to start a Leo Gemini cycle. So we've got this Leo retrograde star point, and next June we're going to have a 14 degree Gemini star point. And we are moving out of a Capricorn Libra cycle. So it's going to change the energy a lot. And this is moving into a very creative, fiery time with lots of new inventions. I've actually um, a friend of mine, an astrologer called Leah Whitehorse of Lua Astrology, she actually shared with me an article about a new discovery um, in science saying that they had or that they kind of felt like they found it before. But this news was announced during the Venus retrograde. They're saying they think they've actually found a fifth fundamental force in science. So the four fundamental um, sources we've uh, forces, sorry, we've got so far are gravity, electromagnetism, the strong force, and the weak force. And these four fundamental forces govern how all the objects and the particles in the universe interact with each other. But they said they've we've they really think they've discovered this fifth 
force of nature. And why do I mention that? Because Venus is connected to nature. All right. She's connected to the material world. She's connected to our relationships. She's connected to love. But she's also connected to the idea of love and compromise and social mores and rules and so on. And in Leo, this is really about coming down into the heart and looking at where we are leading from the heart and where our, we are really operating from love and values. So that's kind of the core message of the retrograde. But I pulled a card for this uh, call as well while we look at the Kazemi. And I actually got the Princess of Discs, if you can see it, okay, in the uh, Toth or Thoth deck. And this is <laughs> Mastery of Creativity of birth and Birth of New Forms. So what was I just saying? So uh, the Princess of Discs is the pregnant lady who represents mastery of creative power. She is a woman who has been over the volcano and through the briar patch. That's all behind her. You can see it. But she bears new life that has been gestating and incubating within her for some time. She is fertile and abundant with either a new identity, a new lifestyle, a new creative project, project or even a new human being. So her pioneer nature is represented by her Aries crown. And we have the North Node in Aries. I'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, the horn That's the horns that she wears on her head. The snake on her shoulder, which transforms into an ermine cloak, represents her earthy and ancient passion to create. The Princess of Discs, and I'm reading from Anjali's Arian's book um, called the Tarot Handbook. <laughs> the Princess of Discs desires to give birth to new forms that are in alignment with who she is. That's the lighted crystal wand. Okay, you can see that. And she is determined to manifest harvest. That's the pe pedestal of tied grains upon which she leans in a balanced and organic way. The lotus, then that's the lotus blossom with the yin yang center to bring everything into center, really very balanced. So this, mm, I've worked, I've done five retrograde, Venus, Venus retrograde classes. And I call them the Venus retrograde heroine's journey. Uh, we're halfway through the current class. I've got quite a lot of people on the class and they're all loving it. So you're too late for this one, but um, you know, the next one will be <laughs> in 584 days time before it'll start before that. So, you know, if you're called to do it, keep following me and see when the retrograde um, class comes up. But I can tell you that this retrograde is just off the top, off the charts. So one other thing, though, before I dive into the chart is I want to show you a picture. This is on spaceweather.com. And I took a screenshot from it. You can go and look at spaceweather.com and see it. Um, it will be today. I'm recording this on the 11th. So it, you know, they it will have fallen down their feed if you listen, watch this video afterwards. So I took the picture to show you. So this was taken on August the 10th. So only yesterday. And Venus is now a ring. Venus is disappeared. You know, she is just visible with very, very good te uh, telescopes from the right place. But Venus has a, a dark side and a, a day side, a night side and a day side, just like the moon does. And so we've got the dark side of Venus now facing us because Venus is between us and the sun. So her day side is lit up by the sun, but we're seeing the dark side. OK, and so as this says, this rare event is a sign that Venus is approaching her interior, sorry, her inferior, but I suspect for interior conjunction. And on August the 13th, uh, we'll, she'll pass di almost directly between Earth and the Sun from our perspective. 
at that time, the night side of Venus is facing us and only a fringe of sunlight, cloud tops visible around the planet's sunlit cloud tops visible around the planet's circumference. I have to say, does it say, oh, from France? Anyway, it's like a new moon. Venus has lost her light from our perspective. Venus has phases, by the way, like the moon, where we can see the moon gain light and then lose light, you know, through the through the 20, uh, almost 28 day cycle. This is just a longer cycle. And incidentally, I have a membership where I work with the phases. But um, I thought this photograph was absolutely stunning of this of this ring. OK, so it's so subtle that he took him 30,000 images. <laughs> OK, yeah. so, OK, let's look at the chart. You could tell I'm excited about this because Amy, right? Because I work with Venus, my um, my uh, membership community is called the Venus Enchantment Community. I do the Venus Retrograde Heroines Journey class. I am um, I'm certified with Ariel Gutman's Venus Star Point work um, from her book Venus Star Rising. Um, I'm certified to teach it and use it. And I probably will be offering a class um, probably early next year at this point uh, to actually teach the Venus star point work itself on its own. Uh, but anyway, let's dive into the chart. <clears throat> so here's on the left, you can see that Venus is conjunct the sun from our perspective at 20 degrees, 28 minutes of uh, Leo. Now, interestingly, this is happening at 7.15 a.m. Um, on um on Sunday the 13th and 13 incidentally is you know the the witching number it's said to be unlucky because um you know it's been portrayed as unlucky by um I'm going to say by the patriarchy 13 is actually a really powerful number it's really the number of the goddess and I think this uh Venus retrograde is so much about the divine feminine rising in the heart with Venus basically being the feminine, but it's not to kind of uh, take over. This is to balance out with the divine masculine. I do think this is the rise of the solar feminine. Uh, the sun was seen as feminine in many, many cultures um, in the past. It's been referred to as masculine for a long time in our culture. But I kind of think it's now balancing out because we have divine feminine and divine masculine, the yin, the yang, the night, the day in everything that is. And there's a few things in this retrograde as a whole and this chart that um, that really kind of point to that. So I've highlighted in blue the main aspects to Venus as she is Kazemi, the sun. So the, the asteroid to the left, this is actually Urania. Urania was one of the muses. Uh, there were nine muses in total. Urania is actually the uh, muse of astronomy, astrology, philosophy, cosmology, and, and she is said to be able to inspire and rise up and help us to, you know, use our imagination to really create new forms. So, I'm, you know, we're coming to uh, Venus being Earth's big sister, which she's also been described as being ready to really create new forms. But also this is about kind of being uh, much more kind of inspired and much more uplifted, you know, I'm feeling it myself as I, as I guide, I've got 120 odd people in this class, and I'm holding space for them to have these awakenings, and I'm witnessing it happen, people are kind of getting, uh, they're getting these aha moments already, and they're getting inspired, and they're feeling more creative, and they're feeling more joy, which is another side of Leo, so even if you're not doing my class, you may be feeling this lift up. I mean, we're doing some kind of deep work to help that along. 
but um, but they are feeling inspired, and um, I hope you are too. But this uh, Kazemi, as its conjunct um, asteroid Urania, is also square to Uranus, and the exact square from Venus to Uranus was a couple of days ago, but Ur uh, Urania is now almost exactly square Uranus. So all this really is happening together, and Venus will square Uranus again when she's di direct and moves back to um, the 22nd degree. And Uranus is kind of, um, he's the great awakener. He's the Lord of lightning bolts. He's aha moments. He's sudden change. He's radical. He's revolutionary. And we're kind of seeing some of that as well. We're kind of, we're seeing people rise up, which is why I thought it was appropriate to buy this t-shirt and share it with you. <laughs> and I'll show you again before I leave what this t-shirt is like, because it's just I think it's hilarious, to be honest, and I love it <laughs> because, well, I'll talk about more. Also, so, and but Uranus is in Taurus, which is one of Venus' home signs, okay? So Uranus, and, and I, I always think of Taurus as being mm, the most earthly of Earth signs, and and Taurus is about our core values. We've had the North Node going through Taurus for the last uh, about year and a half, pulling us to get very clear on our core values. Uranus has been going through the sign of Taurus for quite a long time, but Jupiter is now in Taurus as well, and he expands everything. And I'll look at Jupiter again in a minute. But these two are only six uh, seven, eight degrees apart. So they're getting very close to their conjunction. Plus Uranus is going to go retrograde at the end of this month. So they're going to move closer together pretty quickly. So I'm going to call that a conjunction. But Uranus for now is, is kind of sending jolts of electricity through our body, saying, are you ready to shine? Are you ready to be more joyful? Are you ready to be more loving? Are you ready to kind of just really shine your light out in the world and, and be more dramatic and be more fun and maybe kind of let that inner child out? And you know what you're creating can be anything. You know, you could be turning to art or you could just be choosing to wear more fun and creative t-shirts like this, or, or you could be uh, creating a new job or a new home or you know it's about creating your life and it's really about doing it from joy as my uh, good friend Nora Herald says on uh, she's a Facebook friend um, she says she's got this hashtag that says operate from joy and and this is what this Leo retrograde is about to my mind it's about coming out and letting this joyful heart um more um i'm going to call it feminine but it's more yin it's more kind of softer it's more loving it wants to kind of the best for everybody let that out because leo is the sign of the leader so it's really calling us to lead with love and uranus is saying it's time to radically change and let's all operate from love and 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 so on so I'm kind of hoping this really comes to, to fruition. <laughs> but anyway, the other aspect from Venus Kazemi is a trine to Chiron. Chiron is retrograde too. Chiron stationed retrograde the same weekend that Venus did. Venus stationed retrograde on July the 22nd. And Chiron is in Aries. And I said I, the horns on this. And Aries is about taking a stand. Aries is I am, it's the pioneer. This is about standing up for yourself. Um, it's saying, this is who I am and I am going to stand up and I'm going to stand up for, you know, what I believe. Aries is very kind of determined, very strong. Um, and, and with Chiron in there, Chiron is the key that's unlocking the healing. And, and it is those horns. This is kind of saying, I'm I'm not going to hold back anymore. I'm not going to sit there and, you know, um, and compromise my values for others. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to also uh, go out and attack. I am just going to be very self-contained like the princess of discs. 
and bring everything into center. Let me uh, stop my share and show you the card again. Bring everything into center and know that it all comes from within. And I love that she has this um, diamond, uh, you know, crystal wand as well. And that could be the light of the sun kind of shining that down to earth, saying we have to kind of, you know, we are here. You know, we are here on earth. We are human. We are here for this human experience. So we are here to bring it down, bring it into the heart and be more loving. Back to the chart. <laughs> You tell I get excited about Venus. So, uh, you know, I think Chiron, especially with him being retrograde, he and um, Venus are kind of working together on this retrograde, saying, you know, what parts of me do I need to heal? You know, where do I need to um, fill in the, you know, the cracks that have worked, that have hurt my heart? Where do I need to uh, find that heart healing and and, and kind of nurture my heart and fill it up so that I can love myself more, say I am effing radiant, and and then kind of shine that out on the world to inspire others and love others. But then Chiron stations direct, not till the um, December 26th. He's going to go all the way back to 15 Aries. But Venus will go direct on September the 3rd at 12 degrees, 12 minutes, Leo. 12, 12. One, the divine masculine. Two, the divine feminine. And three is a very creative number as well. The numbers are off the charts. So before I look at the pink um, highlighted aspects, I do want to say that not long after this, Kazemi is exact. Just it's like a couple of hours later, Venus actually reaches her perigee, which is the closest point to Earth. And that is at 20 degrees, 22 minutes of Leo. Two, two, two. Divine feminine, divine feminine, divine feminine. This is such a divine feminine kind of rising up kind of energy in all of us. All right. This is not necessarily about women, though, you know, with the rise of Barbie and <laughs> and the rise of, P of, of uh, the news about Taylor Swift and her album selling and her era's tour selling and then Beyonce's uh, Renaissance, which is rebirth tour selling. All of these women and, and Sinead O'Connor, even though she's passed, you know, she's in our consciousness again. It's, it's a lot about uh, women as well, but we all have Venus in us. So, but we also see it in like Ohio where um, the issue one um, was um, rejected that would have made it nigh on possible to uh, put forward a resolution and get that and get it voted on to uh, enshrine the right to um, abortion care in the Ohio Constitution, and that backward, that's that reversal is happening in a lot of places too. Uh, people are saying no, this isn't right, and yet you know a lot of men are voting for this too. So again, it's not just women; it's people who go that you know, this is just just not loving. This is not right. This is you know, and and rebellion, reversal, Uranus. It's shifting. I really do think it is. All right, so back to the other um, aspects. So we have Black Moon Lilith at 15 degrees of Leo. Now, she was actually conjunct Venus as Venus stationed retrograde on July the 22nd. And Black Moon Lilith is kind of our wild elemental self, our, our wild woman. But she was the original um, wife of Adam. But she was also the rejected um, or... Uh, spurned or um, um, angrily left kind of Adam wife because she would not submit to him. And she's the one that's been painted as a demon for, for thousands of years by the patriarchy. She was, you know, said to have been a demon who ate babies and all kinds of things like that. So in that respect, Black Moon Lilith 
represents a part of ourselves where we've been shamed, where we've been shamed by society, where we've been shamed by whoever in our lives or where we feel shame for maybe not doing enough or, you know, whatever, wherever shame is coming up. It's a good idea to listen to Brene Brown or read her on, on shame at the moment with all of this coming up. But Black Moon Lilith um, is, she moved, I use the true calculation, cal calculation. So on Miss Kazemi, she's at 15 degrees of Leo and 15 degrees of a fixed sign, which is Leo, is a world point. All right. It's said to be the degree where the sun is on uh, the Lion's Gate that a lot of people celebrate. The Lion's Gate is not really my thing. I know it's um, a thing for Egypt, really. And um, it's a, a got real spiritual meaning for Egypt. Um, so, it, you know, um, a lot of astrologers kind of uh, dis Lionsgate, but, um, and maybe in the West, it's become, uh, for some, not for everybody, it's become this big thing that they, they can't even explain very well. And it's not really based on um, exact astrology um, for where the position of the stars are now. But it has great, and it was not called the Lion's Gate in Egypt either, but it is to do with the rising of Sirius. And it's also, or at least it used to be, before the fixed star Sirius um, moved by progression from our perspective, it was to do with the 15th degree of Leo as well, which is a world point, which is a significant degree in the chart. So um, Black Moon Lilith is there as if to say, I'm not taking this anymore, not doing it any more at all. So that's um, amazing too. Uh, and I'm going to release where I felt shame for being a woman, for doing all these things or, you know, or for not supporting women enough. Um, anyway, uh, and and for not being equal and not claiming that equality Anyway, Black Moon Lilith is in square to Jupiter. And Jupiter is in Venus home, Taurus. And Jupiter is expansive and is really kind of saying it's time to expand your light out in the world. All right. And, and Jupiter is almost at 15 degrees of Taurus, which is a world point, of course. So a significant turning point, a significant degree. Now, the other aspect here is Ceres. Um, some of you, if you've been following me for a long time, know that I love working with Ceres as well as Venus. Um, C-E-R-E-S. That is, I actually have a T-shirt, like Ceres too. But um, she um, she really is the great mother. And, and you could say that in some ways, um, uh, Venus is Persephone and Ceres is Demeter. She... Ceres and Demeter were the similar god goddesses in different pantheons. And she is the great mother who lost uh, her daughter and grieved and uh, had to come to terms with uh, the cycles of life that, you know, we can't keep our uh, maidenhood innocent. It's, we're going to kind of, <laughs> you know, um, uh, we're going to kind of become adults and mature. But Ceres is so much more. Ceres is deep, deep, deep um, desire, deep longing, deep nurturing, deep needs. And she is in Libra, which is Venus' other home. OK, and and she's in this quincunx to Taurus. And to, there's one way you could put to Jupiter in Taurus. One way you could say that is that we are kind of um being asked to let go of uh, like the libra energy because the south node is now in libra to let go of any de debilitating niceness of uh, any kind of codependence of any thinking that we have to kind of get a, go along to get along i'm not saying we turn into these haridans who who like fight all the time but this, as I said, is about standing up for ourselves 
and saying a strong no if uh, if it doesn't work. And I think this quincunx between the two Le Venus homes on this um, star point is asking us to shift and really get embodied in our core values and get very rooted and to say, OK, we need to find a balance between going along, being nice, being in wanting harmonious relationships and standing in our values. We have to kind of shift because in my opinion, <laughs> the divine feminine has been too passive for met for very long. Or alternatively, they've kind of tried to be, if, if we're talking about women, they've tried to, you know, exist in this patriarchal hierarchical system that just doesn't really fit. And that would apply to a lot of men too. They don't fit in this system. So I see this as a really big shift in our evolution, this retrograde. Of course, it's connected to a lot of other kind of planetary shifts. So I'm going to talk about a couple of other things that are happening. This, this But this Venus retrograde is honestly just like for me. And I'll tell you another reason why it's a special um, Kazemi, though, in a minute. But on the Kazemi chart on Sunday morning, um, Juno, who was uh, Zeus or Jupiter's wife, she is the goddess of um, of relationships, but all our sacred contracts and sacred relationships are, uh, with each other. She was also the goddess of women and children. And, you know, she's often also been portrayed as kind of this victim because uh, Zeus, the god, was a hound dog, but then a lot of the gods were. And but she I kind of see her as this very strong queen. She was queen of the gods and she just kind of let him get on with it and did her own thing. <laughs> so she stood up for herself. And um, and Juno over here in the sign of cancer, which is the sign of the moon and birthing, is opposing Pluto. And Pluto is kind of the lord of the underworld who really took Persephone into the underworld. So we're kind of looking into our shadow about our relationships. How are we kind of birthing a new way of being in relationship from this more loving heart with the Venus Cassini? It's very complex, but it's amazing. But anyway, I'm not going to kind of go on. There's a lot more I could say, but um, we are in essence during this time being um invited to really step into this uh, you know and um to create new forms birth new forms birth new ways of being in relationship birth more harmonious more balanced relationships and we are being asked to leave behind all that stuff that's behind okay the briar patch and the volcanoes behind the troubles and just say, you know, we are, if we, if we stand up for ourselves and are very rooted in our values, then our, and if we love ourselves and care for ourselves, then we can create a better relationships and a better life for ourselves. Oh, but why else is this Kazemi special? So we have a new Venus, as I said, that's, um, at 7 15 a.m um eastern on uh, sunday morning but then on the 16th we have a new moon as well so the moon on this um chart i'm not going to show you the chart again i'm just going to talk is still in cancer in its own sign the moon after v the venus kazemi is going to move forward conjunct juno oppose pluto it's going to move into Leo and move closer and closer. And then we're going to have a new moon at 23 degrees Leo. I've already done a podcast for that. But that why is that special? It's because we are having a new Venus cycle and a new moon cycle at the same time. Three days. That's 
that's nothing you know that's that's nothing 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 the leo new moon takes place on august the 16th at 5 38 a.m eastern so it's less than 72 hours after the new venus and the thing about the venus cycle is uh, the venus retrograde cycle is that she's not um, invisible for very long from our perspective when she's um, uh, you know blinded by the the sun she soon rises as morning star but because the moon cycle is faster it's we are usually in a three-day no moon phase okay and this will depend where you are on us so don't get too tied up with this but um, as uh, the moon becomes visible about a day and a half after the new moon, which will take it to 16th, 17th, almost the 18th. Venus is also rising as the morning star. So we've got the new moon starting to gain light. Then we've got Venus rising as morning star in the east, also starting to gain light because she, as she moves through her phases to the Gemini star point that's coming up next June, she will gain more and more light and get brighter and brighter. So, you know, this is such a powerful new beginning, new time. And to add to that, you know, it's in Leo, the sign of the sun. We are birthing kind of this new uh, new selves, new way of being, uh, new light, uh, new joy, new fun, new forms, all that kind of thing. Or we're being given the opportunity to, but it's a powerful opportunity. All right. Now, there's a lot more I could say about this, but, you know, I could go on and on. There's so many other aspects happening at the moment. Uh, by the time of the new Venus, and, and in fact, as I record this as well on the 11th, the nodes are at 27 degrees Libra and Aries, um, Neptune is at 27 degrees Pisces, and they are all in aspect to the galactic center, which is Sagittarius A, the massive black hole at the center of our Milky Way, our galaxy. So whilst we go around the sun, our solar system goes around um, um, the, you know, in the Milky Way around the black hole. And, and so the black hole... <laughs> Um, the galactic center is said to be emitting new information to us, to the cosmos, to humanity. You could call the galactic center um, kind of the um, uh, almost like the the uh, voice of whatever the divine is in our galactic system. So this is powerful. This is huge. And I have to say, if you've got anything around 20 degrees of um, the Venus star point, you will be really a feeling, uh, really feeling it, particularly the fixed signs, which are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius. This happens to be my right on my Uranus, which might explain my excitement. OK, so I'm having a Uranus square as well as a star point on my Uranus. And I feel like things are bursting out. I feel like things are just, you know, it's fine. I'm finally in my swing, in my business. You know, my class sold really well. I, my writing is coming. My My book is forming in my mind. And I've got um, um, appointments set up with an accountability partner to uh, write this book. And incidentally, that book's going to be on series. Uh, so watch this space for that. My aim is to get it done and hopefully at least self-published if I can't find a publisher by the end of 2024. So <laughs> before the next retrograde, Venus retrograde. So I really want you to uh, focus in onto this Venus retrograde it's uh, or this Venus star point. So Sunday morning, as I'll remind you of the time, it's 7.15 a.m. Eastern. Now it is, um, what, what was I going to say? It, it really is um, kind of Kazim even for most of that day. But if you can get up early, if you're on the West Coast like me, 
for me, it's at 5.15 a.m. So, you know, I'm not sure I'll make it up quite that early. But, you know, if you can get up fairly early and be close to the Kazemi and, and go and sit outside or meditate on it or journey on it, you won't see Venus, but just tap into her and go, you are being reborn. We are being reborn. Venus really is, apart from, you know, the moon is the closest to Earth, of course, and affects our cycles and um, and um, and also affects, um, you know, the tides and the water and how it moves in our body. But Venus affects us too. Venus um, makes a five pointed star, her cycle, the pentagram. And we are all fives, you know, got five fingers, we've got five toes, we've got two ears, a nose, <laughs> and um, and there's something else. <laughs> we've got we've got 23 digit, digits all together, actually, which makes a five. That's 10 fingers, 10 toes, two ears, and a nose. Um, you know, all um I've referred to the number 23 as a Eris number, and it is that, but also it's in our body. If you do two plus three, which is a five. It's the number of seconds the blood takes to go around the body. It's the number of pairs of DNA we have. It's the number of days in the biorhythm cycle. It's also the number of chaos magic. So this is an opportunity to really make magic, to really kind of come down into your heart and start to really love and care for yourself. And, and then come and let it radiate out okay <laughs> and and that reminds me of this t-shirt again which I will show you again in a minute so <laughs> so you know it's this is radiant and that's why I bought this t-shirt and I bought it because I want to feel it but I want to I wanted to inspire you to feel it too all right so I am just going to look at the um Chandra symbol for this and it's a holly bush covered with berries it is in the snow I'm not going to read the description there but I'll just say what I got from it when I did the class on this you know we're, we're kind of in a winter we are in the dark Venus phase we are in the dark moon phase we are within we are looking within like this card and we are kind of in a winter of ready to, you think about when the winter comes, you know, that when the light returns at the solstice, which is when the sun stands, stands still at the solstice, that's when the light and life begins to come back in. That's when things begin to grow again. Okay. And I love that this is a holly bush covered with berries. It's like the berries, the fruit, Venus is related to the apple. <laughs> She's related to the pomegranate. She's related to fruit and fertility as well and desires. And here we have the berries. The berries are come on the bush while we're in this um, dark, um, dark time, ready to create. All right. And ready to grow and ready for the light to return. That's kind of how it feels to me. And so as well, let's um, have a, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to look at the Sabian symbol. I save some things for my class, but I hope you feel it. This is kind of enormous. All right. This thing with, with radical Uranus there as well, kind of waking us up. feels like Uranus kind of slapping us around the face going, come on, it's time to enjoy your life. It, it's a real kind of carpe diem kind of time that we're in. I said that in my writing the other day. It's time to go, stop playing small. Stop, you know, um, uh, just thinking that you have to, uh, you know, live by um, everybody else's rules and things. And I'm not talking about breaking the law. I'm talking about more social kind of um, mores and niceties and tastes and things it's time to really kind of embody your fullness and embody your heart and take a big leap 
<laughs> oh, I'm getting a bit overexcited about this one, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stand up and I'm going to show you this T-shirt once again, and then I'm going to get this uploaded and go and make my dinner. So here you go. I know it's backwards, but I'm sure you can make it out. And if you want one, it's um, from a company called The Spark Company, and they're in the UK, and they ship really fast. So, um, and they, it wasn't that expensive, to be honest, either. All right. I do love you. <laughs> and I'm very excited about all this with the being on my Uranus. I feel like I am uh, blooming, and I hope you do too. Much love.